Hey everybody! In this lesson, we are going to talk about hydrocracking units. These units are important components of refineries and are used to convert heavy oil products into lighter products such as diesel, gasoline, kerosene, and naphtha. Let's join the new trainee on a tour of the unit. Wow, there is a lot of piping here. How does it work? The feed for this unit consists of heavy oils and can come from other units such as a fluidized catalytic cracking unit, a coker unit, or an atmospheric or vacuum distillation tower. In some cases, alternative sources of oil can be used, including oil produced from plants or animals. The feed oil goes through a surge drum to dampen any surges coming from the inlet and is then pumped into the reactor inlet stream. A compressor is used to feed makeup hydrogen into this stream. The combined feed oil and hydrogen then travel through an exchanger and charge heater to preheat them before they enter the reactor. The feed is then combined with hydrogen in a reactor to break the longer, heavier chain molecules into shorter chains. Then these shorter chains are saturated with hydrogen. How do the longer chain molecules get broken into shorter chains? That's a great question. Let's stop by the lab. I think I know someone who can explain it for us. Hi. We've got a new trainee here today for a tour. Do you think you could explain how the reactor in the hydrocracking unit works for us? Sure. There are three important reactions which take place in the reactors. Catalytic cracking uses heat to break longer, heavier molecules into shorter chains with the use of a catalyst. These shorter chains are then saturated by adding hydrogen in a hydrogenation reaction. The cracking reaction is endothermic and uses heat. The hydrogenation reaction is exothermic and produces heat. If one reaction uses heat and the other produces it, what happens to the overall reaction? Hydrogenation produces more heat than the cracking reaction consumes, so the overall hydrocracking reaction is exothermic. Another important reaction is hydrotreating, which is performed to remove impurities such as sulfur and nitrogen. These impurities are converted to ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, then removed downstream. Inside the reactor, quench gas is distributed through rings in each reactor bed. Liquid collection trays are used to distribute the liquid in the tower. Each catalyst bed consists of the catalyst with wire mesh and non-reactive ceramic balls to keep the catalyst in place. Thanks for your explanation. It looks like we better let you get back to your experiments. What happens after the reactor? After passing through the reactor, the product goes to a high-pressure separator where hydrocarbon liquids and gas are separated. Hydrogen is recycled back to the reactor with a compressor and the liquids are sent to a low-pressure separator for further separation into off-gas and liquids. The off-gas is sent for further processing in an amine unit where hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide are removed. The liquids are sent for further processing in a fractionation tower where they can be separated into useful products such as diesel, gasoline, kerosene, and naphtha. Hmm, there is a lot going on in this process. Yes, and there are different ways of configuring the unit, too. Let's stop by the office to talk to one of the unit engineers. I heard you were stopping by today to learn more about hydrocracking units. Yes, I have a new trainee here who would like to learn more about why the unit is set up the way it is. Okay, there are different ways of configuring the unit which produce different yields. In a once-through unit, residual uncracked hydrocarbons are not recycled. In units with recycle, uncracked hydrocarbons from the bottom of the reactor are recycled back for additional cracking, instead of being immediately sent to another unit for further processing. In some facilities, a single reactor is used. This is the simplest configuration, but produces the lowest conversion ratio. The catalyst used must be capable of hydrotreating and hydrocracking. Otherwise, pretreatment may be required to remove ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. But the unit we just visited has two reactors. Yes, in a two-stage unit, two reactors are used. 
The first unit contains a hydro-treating catalyst, which removes sulfur and nitrogen. This means better conversion can be achieved in the second reactor. How? Since most of the ammonia and hydrogen sulfide have been removed in the first reactor, a different catalyst can be used in the second reactor. The catalyst in the second reactor only needs to be capable of cracking the hydrocarbon chains and saturating them with hydrogen, not removing the impurities. Noble metal catalysts such as palladium or platinum produce higher conversion, but they are more susceptible to poisoning from impurities. Interesting. I don't think I'm ready to operate the unit yet, though. No, there's a lot to learn. You need to understand some of the hazards associated with this process as well. It might be valuable for you to sit through part of the HAZOP next week. Thanks for watching. Interested in joining the Process Safety Board? Submit your application on processsafetyboard.com today and be a part of the growing community.